So what is multi-channel beam forming? And here we've got a transmitter with multiple antennas and a receiver with multiple antennas. And I've shown a blockage between the two. So regular beam forming would look for a reflective path off this wall here, for example, and then it would adjust the phases on these antenna elements in order that the electromagnetic wave adds up in the direction of that path. And then you would get a connection between this uh, transmitter here and each of the different receivers. And so there would be a connection to this receiver here, there would be a connection bouncing off the wall to this receiver here, and another one from here to here. And the same thing would happen for the other transmit antennas as well. And so you would be getting, nine, in this case, with three antennas at each end of the communication link, you would be getting nine different paths. And these would be represented by different amplitudes and phases in the baseband. Uh, and this can be drawn in a matrix. We can write that into a matrix. So this would be a matrix here. Uh, in this case, it would be three by three. But in general, you will have, if we have M uh, transmitting antennas and N receiving antennas, then we would have a matrix H, which is N by M. And it means then you have M different signals uh, so this would be m by 1 is the s vector, and you would be receiving n different symbols, which is n by 1 vector at the receiver. So this is a matrix equation which represents this channel scenario, where the elements of H are complex numbers, representing amplitudes and phases. And for more information on regular beamforming, uh, look in the description below this video where you'll find a link to a video on regular beamforming. So now let's think about what happens if you have more than one reflector. Uh, so in this case, let's draw another reflector down here. In this case, there will be another path uh, between the transmit antennas and the receiving antennas. And so now we've got another set, all of which are still in the same matrix H. And of course, from the other transmit antennas as well. So these, this path here just adds another complex number for each of the pairs. So between this transmit antenna and this receive antenna, there will be one amplitude and phase going this way and another amplitude and phase going this way. It's still a matrix of the same size. But now we have a, a choice. We can add up, we can put beamforming in one direction and we could also do beamforming in the other direction at the same time in the same frequency band. And that's what we call multi-channel beamforming. So let's, let's look at how we do that. Okay, so we do that by put, doing some pre-processing at the transmitter. So we can put different data. So we could send one data stream in that direction and a different data stream in this direction. And of course, if there's more than two directions, we can do even more than that. And how do we do that pre-processing? Well, we do that by generating our S by one vector of input symbols, which is one symbol for each antenna. We generate that by taking data symbols, which are in X matri uh, vector and multiplying by a pre-coding matrix here. So uh, this X now is going to be uh, R by 1, where R is the number of data streams that we're going to be sending, which really corresponds to the number of viable paths. And then B is the matrix which we have to choose for our multi-channel beamforming, and that is M by R. We make that matrix B be made up of two matrices, one of which is a power matrix and the other is the special matrix that's related to the channel. Uh, so let's look at those two. Now let's look at the power matrix first. The power matrix is a diagonal matrix where the elements on the diagonal are the square root of the powers for each of the different directions that we want to send in. So here we can have, as we've said, we're choosing R. So we can, we've got the power for the first dimension, the second dimension up to the Rth dimension here. 
R has to be less than or equal to the minimum out of M and N. So we can have less than this, but we certainly can't have more than whatever is the minimum. And this is actually our degrees of freedom. So whichever end has the fewer number of antennas, that limits the number of data streams that we can send. Okay, so then we've got, and we're choosing how much power we're going to put on each of those data streams here. So I'll come back to that in a minute. So the columns of U are the eigenvectors corresponding to the R largest eigenvalues of H dagger H. Okay, so H dagger H is the uh, matrix that we are going to look at. And we take, we find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this matrix here. And then we take the R strongest ones and we form this matrix U. Okay, so uh, we've, we've got R different um, directions here. So this is an M by R matrix. So it's the same size as the B matrix. So this is M by R. Okay, so this is how we do the pre-coding. This is our multi-channel beam forming from eigenvectors. Okay, now at the receiver, what do we do? Well, we can do a minimum mean squared error receiver uh, operation at the receiver. Uh, so we multiply by this matrix A, we just call it A complex conjugate transpose because we're going to define A just here, but it's that multiplied by our receive vector Y. So that's what we're going to do at the receiver. And this is effectively also beamforming at the receiver. Okay, so let's have a look at the value of A. This is the standard MMSE uh, receiver. Uh, and for more information on MMSE receivers, again, look in the description below the video where you'll find links to other videos on the channel. So if we've got this combination of B and A, then we have multi-channel beam forming. What you have done is orthogonalized this channel. So we do have an H matrix. It has all of these different paths, which are not all orthogonal to each other. But when you decompose it into the eigenvectors, then each of those different R different channels are independent of each other. So the kth channel, uh, we can get our estimate at the kth channel equals the input for the kth channel, so the element of this x vector here, the kth element, times a constant uh, a scaling factor plus a scaling factor on the kth element of W of noise. And so we now have R parallel channels, each of which is simply the input uh, coming out with a scaling plus noise, not interfered with by the other data streams. So all the data streams are going through independent of each other in parallel. And each one is going on its own beam. And the beams are defined by the eigenvectors of this, uh, of this matrix here. Okay. Um, um, just the last thing then to say is about these powers is that because these eigenvectors have different valued eigenvalues, that means they're different strengths. And a way to think about that is, well, these reflections here are not equal strength reflections. Perhaps they're reflecting off a building that is more absorbent to the electromagnetic waves, or perhaps it's further away. Either way, these are different powered uh, directions, and it leads to having different powered eigenvectors. So the eigenvalues are different, which means that you can choose to put more or less power on each of those directions, and you can choose that. And to, the way to choose that is using water filling, exactly the same way that we do water filling across the frequency band. And for a video on water filling across the frequency band, check the description below this video. But this is exactly equivalent, and now we can do water filling across the eigen space for this multi-antenna communications channel. So if this is, video has helped you to understand multi-channel beamforming, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos. And as I say, check the description below where you'll also find a link to a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.